And if this is your first time here, you are most welcome. I'm really delighted to have you here. And to my previous subscribers, those people who have been watching my videos, my content, God bless you. Those who have been sharing, those who have been commenting, God bless you. Especially on the last video I uploaded um, with regards to prayer for the womb, please endeavor to share it with as many people as you can. It doesn't have to be someone that is waiting for the fruit of the womb. It could also be someone that has um, maybe a medical condition in their womb. I believe that prayer will go a long way for them. So, um, thank you so much for following my content and I really appreciate it. I pray that God will help me to be consistent and I will put in the hard work to also be consistent. Okay, so what is all the Universe channel about? It's a channel that basically focuses on the Word of God, how the Word of God can transform every area of our lives so that we can be the person that God has really created us to be. Just like Psalm 1 talks about that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sin, as nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the Lord that he meditate day and night. And but this is the good part. The Bible says, It shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth his fruit in due season and his leave also shall not be that whatsoever you do it will prosper so and that's my desire for everyone that comes across this channel that comes across any content on this channel that um, this channel will spoil you to study the word of god to stay in the word of god to believe the word of god and to make the word of god your mantra for living so today i'm just going to be sharing a story i was sharing this with some of my friends and they were like oh i shared it on my channel i was like why not because i've seen the hand of guys i've seen the hand of god even through this story today i'm going to be sharing my kidnap story yes i was kidnapped whether gullibly or foolishly or uh, i don't know how to describe it but i was actually kidnapped and um this year i think it happened in 2014 november 30th 2014 I was kidnapped and this year is going to make it um is it eight years yes eight years that i was kidnapped this year november 30th and the yeah, experience was ah, a traumatic experience you know these days is the day of psychology and all of that it was actually a very traumatizing experience if you definitely like to know more about this story you can definitely keep watching and i'm just going to also be sharing how i've seen the hand of god at work in my life in terms of his mercy in terms of his protection in terms of his healing and it's it's quite a story it's quite a story okay so now let's start with the story so in 2014 um i think around early november i traveled to lagos i actually i was i actually grew up in Oshobo, washington state nigeria that's i love Oshobo so much that's why i always stay i don't even like going for holidays then my uncles and aunties always come in and you want to stay in Oshobo? i'm like yes let me stay in Oshobo. but this time i decided to go visit my aunt my mom's younger sister um she lives in lagos she's based in lagos at that time and um i went to visit i was born and i was like i, I actually have a cousin also that lives in lagos so i was like I need to see my cousin i can't come to lagos and not to visit my cousins house this is my cousin is like my sister too so um it doesn't make any sense for me to come to lagos and not visit and it's not like my house is so far away that i can't go and i told my aunt about it she was kind of reluctant i don't know why she was very reluctant you see god eh? then i told my mom my mom was like no i shouldn't go this time that the next time i come to lagos i will go to that my cousin's house instead of my aunt's house so I was like, no, no, it doesn't make any sense. I was, I was just insistent. I was like, I must go to my cousin's house. So my mom was like, okay, no problem. And my aunt was like, no problem. So um, my uh, mom, my aunt, actually, she gave me cab fare because she knows that I'm not very familiar with Lagos. So she gave me um, cab fare, like, instead of taking buses, moving from one place to the other. So she gave me the cab fare and all of that. I was like, how can I use, that? as at that time, I was like, how can I use 1,500 naira for cab? Um, believe you me, as at that time, 1,500 was maybe about, let's say $10, 10 US dollars. So it didn't make any sense to me. I was, I was like, my Oshobo transport fare is like 20 naira, 30 naira, 50 naira. Max, you take your bike, 70 naira, 100 naira, maximum. So I was like, this is too much of the money to use for transport. So my aunt gave me 3K for transport to go and to come back. So when I was going, 
I didn't take um, the cab, I took the public transport. I, you know, I was able to see Lagos and you know, move from bus to bus. It was quite difficult, but at least I survived and I met my cousins. It was a fun weekend, it was a beautiful weekend. And um, I saw our, our daughter, the daughter I was, oh Lord, shout out to you, Sister Tola, like if you are watching this. It was so fun, it was very, very beautiful experience for me. And we went to church that morning. And funny thing, that morning, I, I, because I woke up late, so I couldn't even do my quiet time before going to church. So, but we went to church that time we were attending the Star Christian Center. So, Pastor Nike was the one that was um, um, preaching that morning. And she made a statement. She was like, you know, when things that are not so called good things happen to people, people are like, oh, where God, where are you? Um, this and that. God, why did this happen to me? God, why, 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 why? <laughs> See, you, I did not know that the message was preparing my life. <laughs> so, um, it was just, and she made a statement. She was like, when, um, for example, like uh, when Abraham, you know, when he didn't have a child, and God was like that. I've, I've been on the same place. I'm still on my throne. Whether you have a child or you know, that was our own kind of way of responding in the sense that when we ask God, why do think these things happen to us? We are, God is like, I'm on my throne. I'm in control. I'm in charge of everything. And that was like the summary of that message. That then I was like, hmm. That's good. And I got back home with lunch. So my cousin, she gave I was living at a house that sun it was a Sunday afternoon. I was living at a house that Sunday. So I went there on Friday evening, Friday like afternoon evening then. I spent the weekend basically though. So I got there then Sunday um I was to leave. So she took me to the bus which was like, Oh, I should take a cab. I was like, No, me, I'm not taking a cab. Like me, I know the way now. She was like, Okay, no problem, but I know the way now. I know she was even at peace because I didn't think anything was going to happen to me now. So I took the bus, and when I got to, there's this place called Ojuelegba Bus Stop because um, I was going to somewhere in Surrey and all of that. So I got to Ojuelegba the Bus Stop. The bus stop was not like, it wasn't busy like the usual way the bus stop is. So I was like, when I got there, I was like, okay, what's going to happen? I wasn't seeing the buses that I usually take to my auntie's place, and I was like, okay, what's going on? So I asked the lady, she was selling like all these sweet train gum stops around the. Um, on that bridge, the Jolik Bus Stop. So I was like, oh, that yeah, um, what of the buses that were going to this particular place? And she said, oh, that um, they are not around today. Like most of them are maybe there. Like I don't know what she really. I can't remember. So she was like, I should just walk to the road and try to see if I can get like all these um, tricycles. Like they call them Keke Keke Marua or Keke Napep or something. So I was like, okay, no problem. So while I was walking, this guy walked up to me and he was properly dressed and all of that. And he was like, oh, that he was speaking a kind of accent that was not the regular Nigerian accent. And it seemed like French, like, and it was like, though he came from Kutonu, blah, 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 that um, he's looking for someone that can help him, that he doesn't know, that like, he brought some stuff from Kutonu and the people that he's partnering with, it looks like they want to cheat him. So he needs someone that can be able to speak um, translate for him properly or like and I could kind of understand what they were saying but I was like ah, sorry I don't know anywhere around this area and then first initially they started by asking him for a direction so I was like I don't know like the direction and maybe she asked the woman I asked also so unless I came back I was like guys leave me alone now like I don't know what you're talking about so you know that was enough that I said like he needed help um he needed someone to translate for him blah 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 so there was this another guy that came I was telling me that oh auntie like uh, this guy does not know he was speaking to me in Yoruba he was like uh, this guy he does not know anything and all of that that let's cheat him and collect his money so I looked at that one like really collect his money that I'm not interested in collecting anybody's money by the way this guy really needs help so I'm not interested in collecting his money and that was my response to that other guy and everything but so I was leaving I was I told the guy that I can't really help him and all of that so I was leaving so later I came back again and it was like that he does not really trust anyone around here so so and so that he really needs help so I looked at my time I was like okay I still have time that okay like, where are you going to you mentioned Luz so I was like okay around Luz I know that area a little so I was like okay let's go there so I was like um let's see <laughs> it's just so funny when I think about it now that <laughs> I was so naive <laughs> Oh my god i was so naive i had no idea because um i'm this kind of person that i can i don't like when people get cheated so when that other guy was already coming to me and saying so i was like ah, this guy should fall into the hands of these wicked people now that's how they were cheating and all of that so i was like okay let's see how it goes out maybe i can help 
I can help him. And the other girl was like that. And he now came to me. I was speaking to you about that. Go on that it was like go understand because I'm on buying so and everything that that was the day. He may have bow and he may have man long thing that if he was saying stuff like that, the guy doesn't understand what we are talking about. So when we get there, that he will collect his money and run away with it. That whatever me I want to do is my business. So me I was like, I'm not interested in cheating the guy. I just want to help him and go back home. So we took a bike from. Um, you can even see we took a bike. Or it's not even somewhere we had to walk. We took a bike. Took a bike from what's it called? Um, um, Ojelek Babo stop to a place called Idi Araba. That's where the Luth. Um, I think um, yeah, the, it's Luth is um, is it Lagos State University teaching us hospital? Yeah, that's what it's called. So um, when we got to that area, I wasn't. I knew the hospital, but I knew that okay. Not so familiar, but kind of, I'm kind of familiar. But as we were walking, when we came down from the bike, I, as we were walking, I knew that something was not right. Because first of all, the way people in that environment were looking at me, they were looking at me like, this girl is in trouble. You know, when you sense trouble, I sense that in my heart. And I could have said, I could have told them, that, carry your bag and be going. I was still like, let me just help this guy and do what I have to do, sharp, sharp, and go back home. But as I was walking with them, I knew that um, that position was not, it was not right. And I just, I just wanted, I was like, let me just do what I would do and get back. So we got to a place then, um, we finally got to the place of stuff. So I was like, when we got there, I was like, so what's up, where is the stuff and everything, where are the people and everything? He just told me that I should come down first, that please, can I give him 500 naira? that um he needs to get something to drink because he's been tired and all of that so i was like okay no problem so i even gave him the 500 now so when he came and brought there's this drink called origins an alcoholic drink i looked at him and i'm like okay no problem before he went to use my own money to buy an alcoholic drink i gave him that look i just kept quiet i was like anyway he was like oh you give me back my money when he changes the dollars that it came with i said no problem that it's no big deal so that was how um i was not like where are the people where's everything and now came they brought a nylon bag um with omo water omo, omo in nigeria is basically detergent with water in it then he brought a brown paper and they washed the brown paper in the omo water and it turned to dollars i was like eh <laughs> i said eh fake money i said all of you need to be arrested so like ah they were like, oh, that's the dollars he came with and everything. All these other guys were like, oh, they want to cheat him and everything. So I'm like, no, this is fake money. So I looked at him. I'm like, where did you get this kind of money that this is fake money? As I turned to look at him, uncle's face was very red. I said, this is not the brother I came with. It's not even a brother. <laughs> I was like, this is not the one I came with. Okay. I, I kept quiet. After I shouted that this is fake money and everything. Then after that, he started saying that, oh, that it came with ballot papers. I said, yeah, that Nigeria is doing elections uh, very soon. So it came with ballot. I think it was the next year Nigeria was supposed to do election. I can't remember right now. Oh, uh, yeah. So he said it came with ballot papers. So I was like, ballot papers? Are you INEC? What are you doing with ballot papers and all of that? I was like, all of you have to be arrested. Though. That was how they gave me one slap. Yes, that was when I knew that. Ha! Huh? Yeah. Something has happened. You have entered the wrong place. You are not supposed to be here. This is not the place for you. Ha! Ah, I said, Jesus Christ. That was when I began to pray in my mind. I said, Oh Lord. Because I me, mean, people say my mouth is quite sharp. I guess my mouth was actually sharp. But because I was like, You guys are wrong. First of all, you are wrong. Whether I turn to dollars or you not turn to dollars, I don't know. I, I don't care. Apparently, they say they do that stuff a lot. They trick a lot. And me, I was like, That's so illegal. That's wrong. And then you talk about ballot papers. That's illegal. That's very wrong. So I was like, you guys have to be arrested. That was when, when they slapped me then. When they slapped me, that was when I knew that. He now started speaking. Hmm. See, the way people switch accents. Eh? Hmm. He now started speaking correct Nigerian accent. And correct Yoruba. Ha! Huh. I said, okay. Then as at that time, there were about five guys. So he, the guy that was telling me that I was cheating, then three other guys came and I was the only one in their midst. <laughs> that was how they collected my bag. You know, I went for a weekend, so I had a little bag there. I put all my stuffs, um, my handbag and that bag. They collected my phone. I think as at that time, I think I was using this 
Techno Camon A something. I can't even remember. They collected my phone, they opened my wallet, they now saw four ATM cards. <laughs> they thought I had money because they can see four ATM cards. So they were like, hey, she even has four ATM cards, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not looking at them that, eh, you people are on a Jonesy level because, first of all, these four ATM cards, they are all empty. Because at that time, I can't remember what happened. I, had, I think it was four or three, I can't remember what happened that I had that card. Yeah, I was working my place of work, like I was, I was a student tutor for my A-level school. Yeah, so I had an ATM card and I had some other accounts I got. Lo and behold, they were all empty. So I told them, I said, you people, if you stress yourself, there's nothing inside this card. They were like, okay. I should give them my password that they were going to go and check and if they check and they find money that they're going to deal with me that they are, all of them are going to rape me all of them are going to do different things to me as they were talking about rape, talking about all of those things i was telling god in my mercy god this is not how we plan my life what is going on god where are you and i remember i don't remember pastor um sam's um pastor nikki's message that day but when i go back on my reflecting i was like hmm Lord, where are you? Because I was like, hmm, rape, molestation, and to be honest, as at that time, when the guy went to check my, um, funny thing, all my ATM cards had the same password, so I just gave him one passport, password, and he went, um, the other guy, they opened my bag already, they checked my clothes, they found, um, the money my cousin gave me, my 3,000 naira, that was supposed to be for my transport, I've only used a few hundred naira out of it for dress for the two kids my cousin also gave me some money for upkeep but at the end of the day they took about maybe five thousand or something from me that day they took my phone then that time my cousin in the u.s then sent me this elizabeth arden perfume they took that also in my mind i was like ah, people are hungry you even can even take perfume but anyway that was my i know say that one now too because they already slapped me but in my mind i was like ah, you buy what perfume again they took that also and that was it so while i was there one of them was already touching because i was the only girl there and one of them was already touching me and i was just begging him that please don't touch me please don't touch me he was dipping his hand in my in my skirt and all of that i was like please don't touch me please don't touch me please don't touch me i just kept praying that god please help me and god should just make a way for me to get out again and the the sad part of this was because behind um the place we were was a church and this church where we were really firing prayer they were doing so many things and i'm like how oh, how can you people be in this kind of environment and the, just opposite me there was an uncompleted building they had done the same i was seeing a man also that they were they were most likely doing something like that too yeah no beside me was a man just close to me the opposite me was it was some guys holding guns and with another with another um guy and that environment apparently apparently that environment is known for such stuff so i was just so sad like there was basically nobody that could save you from them in that environment so later they um later the guy one of the guy that went with the card called and was like oh there's no money in the account so they were kind of disappointed so they were looking for ways to still extort money from me so they asked me and they were like does my hand have um money like they tell her that they kidnapped me like will she pay and all of that so i told them i said first of all she doesn't have any money that if you people call her this is how we're going to be both of us will be here nothing is going to happen and all of that so long so call the long story short um they get out of my money they gave me 500 naira to take transport back home and hmm, they now took me through another path like they took me i didn't they didn't take me through the path i came with they took me through another path to get a, a um a what's it called a bike we call it okada in nigeria so to take a bike huh? and so I, I i was i was not even getting myself i because the fact that one of them or two of them were touching me the fact that they were, i had already been robbed and all of that so i took i saw a bike that was passing shortly i was as i was walking i was looking behind me because i was like maybe somebody else would just come and grab me maybe they are not even done with me maybe they were just tricking me you know stuff like that so i just saw a bike and i saw the bike i looked at him he looked kind of young and i was like okay i just told him where i was going to that was our uncle 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 now passed a road that i did not know when i was i was at him i was like this guy where are you going 
because this is not the road to where I'm going, like that I'm familiar with. I don't care if there's another road, but I'm not familiar with this. I was looking at him, then he now said turning, driving recklessly. I gave him a slap from the back. The guy was shocked. He said, Auntie, what happened? I came wash it for him. I was like, no, like, pay me love. That means like, Auntie, what did I do to you? Like, and I said, where are you taking me to? He said, but you said this road. I said, that's where I'm going. So where is this road? He was like, no, it's a shortcut to get to the main road. I said, I don't want shortcuts. Past the main road. I'm so sorry for what I did to that guy. I felt bad later because I was like, it's not his fault. I was just, I just transferred the aggression on him because the people that that assaulted me, they were guys, and for him, it's another guy. So I just felt like all these people, wicked people, um, desperate people, assaulters, um, kidnappers. I was that was the eyes. I was so finally, it took me home and I got home. When I got home. They had been waiting for me and looking for me at home. No, like it wasn't so late, so but they were just waiting because they thought I was going to be home earlier. So when I got home, I told my aunt then she had a maid and also a nanny that a nanny that was very familiar with labor. So I told them what had happened to me. They were so heartbroken for me. And it was it was huge. Because I got home that day, I tried to rest, they all comforted me and all of that. But when I when I at night, right, I was trying to sleep. I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I was just seeing their faces. If I close my eyes, I would see their faces and I was just traumatized. And on my on the bed that day, my prayer was God because I felt sick. I felt um dirty. I felt molested. I felt very sick and I just began to pray to God. I was that was the only thing I could do basically. I just told God, my prayer was God, heal me, please, heal me. I just kept telling God that God, please heal me. Because I, for me, now when I reflect and I look at people who have gone through sexual molestation, I I wonder how they must have gone through that phase of their life. Even myself, that I didn't go through so much. I wonder how much those people would have gone through. And my prayer was, God, please heal me. God, please heal me. God, please heal me. So I couldn't sleep throughout the night. It was, that was my day. I couldn't even pray any, you know, serious prayer. I was just crying and just telling God, that God, please heal me. God, please heal me. And the next morning, I woke up. Um, I couldn't really sleep. They had me by sleep and all of that. I couldn't really sleep. So I was able to sleep a little in the afternoon. Then the first day passed. The second day passed. And by the third day, I was by the second day, self, and by the third day, I was much more better, I was much more okay. And I knew that God had done something, God had actually healed me to the place of, um, to the place of forgiving, to the place of letting go. And I that was when it was later, um, the next year, as I reflect on my life, like I do usually every year. That scripture, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and I'll just read it quickly. 4 verse 18, the Bible says, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's, that line that was for me was that he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. I actually experienced Jesus healing the broken heart because my heart was broken. I, it was it was very huge for me, and I saw God heal me. You know, put me back together and heal me. And that was that was for me a proof that God actually heals a broken heart. So, irrespective of whatever kind of trauma that you might have gone through or that has happened in your life, God can actually heal you. You know, when they say Jesus fixes people, yes, that was what. Sorry, that's my phone. That was what he did for me. He actually fixed me. He healed me. And it was so mind-blowing. It was so huge. It was so huge. And it was very evident because even my aunt was telling me of her own experience of, you know, all this Lagos drama. And for a while, she was very cranky even to everybody at home. And she was surprised that after like a, two days, I was already, you know, better and all of that. So that was my Lagos experience. Oh Lord, when I think about it now, I when I think about those people now, I'm just like, God, I hope they get um, an encounter with you. I hope they have an encounter with your word. Um, I think initially, 
when I was on that back, I was just praying of how God is going to punish them and all of that. But when I got home and began to pray, I saw that these people were wicked people that have not experienced the love of Jesus. People that are out there, the ones that are other people, they have not experienced the love of Christ. They have not experienced the love of Jesus. And it just shows that we have a lot of work to do as Christians. And I just prayed for them that they were going to experience Christ. They were going to experience His word. So that was it. And one of the things I also picked up from this is huh, obey your parents in the Lord. <laughs> I began to think that like maybe if I had obeyed my mom and my auntie and not have gone to my cousin's place and like she said, she said the next time I come to Lagos I will stay maybe in my cousin's place. I could have waited for that time. But I was like, no, how will I just like what I was saying made sense was justified but I also learned the place of obedience. So this is when my mom tells me to not to do something. We sit down and think about it and I ask her why. And you know, stuff like that. And usually she tells me why. In the past, she will not say, she just say, Sha, don't do it. Sha, don't do it. Stuff like that. But um, I'm still grateful because God's mercy found me. It could have been worse. Um, yeah, it could have been worse. It could have been worse actually. But. I, God had mercy on me. They even gave me transport to go back home. They didn't have, um, just leave me to find my way and all of that. And even when I was even saying things that were like, thank God I did not beat me too much. What if they had punched me in the mouth? <laughs> but you know now I can laugh about it because I'm healed because um, I'm in a better place. And to everyone whose heart is broken, I just pray for you that God will heal you. He will set your liberty. He will heal your broken heart and. Um, you'll be able to forgive as many as those that have traumatized, molested you, or done something bad to you, or um, done a level of wickedness to you at any point. Okay, so one of the things I also learned from this is, see, I know you want to be kind. Um, it's the will of God that you are kind. Like I said here, yeah, um, if you can see the back of my soul, kindness is a good thing. Fruit of the Spirit It's part of the virtues that the book of Second Peter said we should add to our lives. Yes, you want to be kind. But this world is a wicked world also. So um, people can take advantage of your kindness. And in my own case, if not for kindness, I don't think I, I would have been in that situation. But apart from kindness, I was also very naive. And you remember that scripture that says, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So in as much as you're trying to be kind to people, you also need to be wise. And you also need to be able to discern be able to discern so it's not every every help that is for you to help <laughs> if that's the, maybe my age factor will not allow me to say it well it's not every help like when you have to say that it's for you it's not every he help you that is for you discern am i the one that's supposed to help in this situation holy spirit do you want me to help in this situation if i'm to help how do i go about it you also need to be wise you also need to allow the spirit to guide you in helping people because really people are wicked and people want to take advantage of you for being good. Does that mean that I will stop being good? No, I'm not going to stop being good to people. I'm not going to stop being kind to people. No, I'm not going to stop that because I've experienced some um, traumatized. I've had some traumatizing experiences. I won't allow that those people's character to change mine. You understand but in as much as i won't allow them to change mind i only put strategies in place first of all the spirit of god helping me to discern and guiding me and also being wise as serpents and being harmless as a dove like the bible talks about and that is found in the book of matthew 10 verse 16. so just want to put that out there that in as much as you want to be kind you also have to be wise and you also have to be able to discern so that's my story of kidnap and Overall, I've learned to trust God, I've learned to obey God, I've learned to um, see Him guide me. And now I can share my testimony with you about the Word of God works, about prayer works, even in that depth. So if you're in that place right now where you're hurting, where you're crying, even if it's one line you can say to God, and He sees the depth of your heart, He hears you and He cares about you, He wants to listen to you, and He wants to fix you, He wants to heal you. So I hope you enjoyed this story time. Maybe more story because I really have a lot of stories. Funny thing, <laughs> but yeah. So hopefully maybe more story times will come. I'll pick out the lessons from um, that story, from those stories. Yes, we'll pick out the lessons from those stories. Yeah. 
So, and funny thing is, usually whenever it comes to my birthday, because we'll remember to the theater, I'm a December girl, so usually something might happen like that. And that thought came back to me, I was like, what if I thought you had conquered this stuff of funny, crazy things happening close to your birthday? Why, how come this one happened? So that fear also was there and all of that. But yeah, that kind of, it also, yeah, it also affected the way I used to go out in Lagos because I'm just always like, maybe somebody's coming after me. I was, as I was even walking home that day, I felt like they were trailing me. Like I just felt like maybe they sent someone to trail me to our house so that they can know if my auntie has money or she does not have. You know those thoughts and everything, but thank God, yeah. Thank God for his deliverance, his protection, his healing, his mercy that I have received and I am learned to obey my parents in the Lord. So that's the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please share and comment um, in the comment section and you can also give tips to people that live in areas where these vices happen and if you've experienced something like that also you can also share in the comment section and I just pray like I said that God will heal you if you are going through a traumatizing time in your life or you are living traumas that you have been through in the past pray that the hand of the Lord will heal you the Bible says there is balm in Gilead the Bible says that Jesus heals them like he healed them. He's the Lord that he, he led us. And I just pray that he will heal you in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you in the next one. Bye.